I mean, I mean, it's really a, a, a needed to us quite a long time to, to, to get some, to, to be clear about the perspective we have, you know, because I didn't want it to have just a subjective point of view. It's not the dead person's voice we hear, it's not the dead person's uh, uh, eyes we're looking through. So I, I go there as a filmmaker to like re-experience the whole thing. And somebody is reading the text which is found in the diary. That was my back uh, mm -hmm. construction. Okay. <coughs> but to, to, to see it now in, in the film, I had to be very clear because in a way if you, if you have this, uh, as many dangers, uh, many dangers like uh, illustrating the thing which is not possible be very boring, reducing the text. So <coughs> on the other hand, you cannot do when anything goes, you know. So I had to be very clear about the structure. To make it easy, it's about four tracks I have, the four most important tracks. So as you see, the reintroduction is shot like a fiction. It's like a television criminal story. We are used to, to that kind of news. So it's very objective. Somebody is found, <coughs> a voice is telling what happened, and uh, so on. And then the t after the title, then comes the title, and after the t title we switch into being there. We go back and are there, here and now. I wanted to have it mo as physical as possible to be there. Um, like it feels there, that you, you can feel the cold, the humidity, the also the night, the insects, the, the, the nice parts and the very bad parts in a physical way. And the third level is memory. So he is coming from an urban context. He is ob or obviously, he is anonymous, but obviously he is a man from the city. He is a well-educated person. He read uh, literature, he was listening to classical music and so on, and he, had, he was a very normal person. So I wanted to have this background at the beginning, like going backwards again, starting with this uh, saloon, uh, how do you, uh, Joy, uh, uh, playing pinball. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, okay. so, yeah, the yeah. Exactly. yeah, starting there and then going with the strain the train and then back to the city and his last impressions you know that uh, are is the third level of the film the third track in imaginary and this is vanishing during the film it's getting less and less and in the last third of the film there's no more city images they are more and more replaced by the fourth track which is I call the inner inner images what, what's going on if you are alone, not only in the forest, if you are alone on your own for a very long time, more and more you have your own. You, you are not watching what's around you. You are not always uh, watching the trees and the birds. You are looking inside. You have, and you're sleeping, and he's sleeping a lot. You have dreams. You have uh, <coughs> longings. You have images from other and more and more he is hallucinating, you know, the more and more he is coming into the agony and he is also hallucinating. So you see, you have these four tracks of image, this, that's a very strict system I had, but inside this system, I was quite free and quite intuitive. I think um, it was very important to have a location, to a very <coughs> easy. So in the text, it's, uh, which is now off, it's no longer in the original text, it's it's, uh, it's exact uh, place. It's in uh, some place in Hokkaido, in Japan. So I was never there, 
I just imagine how does it look like in Hokkaido. Mm -hmm. And that's why, why I went around in Switzerland to find a place who could look like somehow uh, in the wetlands in a high level uh, like Hokkaido. And it was very funny because an old man who was uh, living for 30 years in Japan was one day helping us coming there. And he came to the place and said, it's really, it's true, it looks like Hokkaido there. So it was kind of intuition we had to find this place. And the other thing was the city. How does the city look like? It's not so easy to have a city which is not identify, uh, which, which you cannot identify. It has to be a normal, average city somewhere in the civilized world. So. <coughs> Uh, with, with no Eiffel Tower, no Big Ben, no nothing, so that you don't know where you are. It's somewhere in the world. It's like the forest is some forest in this world. It's some person who dies here. It's mm -hmm. in some city he's coming from. Because it's a, it's a kind of global thematical thing. Um, the other thing was because he is not really, he was living, he was normal. I guess he's all we know about him He's not a depressive person, he's not complaining. Uh, he had girlfriends, he had a normal life in a way. He just didn't feel connected, really, to, to, to the environment. He did not, he was not uh, happy about what life offered him in the city. So he is there, he sees everything, he's in the middle of things, but he's not really related to it. So that was my instruction for the cameraman, which was not so easy, because normally you do the opposite. You send the cameraman and say, focus on this, focus on this, or focus on this. I told him, don't focus. <laughs> you know? Try to, to do the opposite of focusing. You are there, you see things, but you are not related to things. 